think of skyscrapers and the Statue of Liberty. But in the olden days, there was much more to be seen, much more beauty, than pretty much anywhere else in the world. And yet, years later, we see it fallen. We see trash, overflowing sewers, rats, signs that say rat warning, beware. Do you think the people of this day and age, the old people, would let that happen? Do you think they would have such disregard for the beauty of their own city when they built this, when they built these structures and these beautiful monuments? I don't think so, because in the pictures, you'll never see one piece of trash on the street. I think people no longer care about the world around them and only care for themselves. And that's pretty sad. If you follow the Hudson River up north from New York City for a few hours, you'll come across Polapel Island. On Polapel Island, you'll find a fucking castle. I didn't think that there was a castle up there. I mean, this is upstate New York. We're not talking about uh, Eastern Europe. We're not talking about someplace out in, uh, in Russia. We're talking about upstate New York, not too far from New York City. What the hell is this castle doing there? I'm originally from upstate New York, and I never realized uh, that this existed. Um, but just having a look at it and reading up on its history a little bit, it's called Bannerman's Castle. I won't get into discussing its history according to what you find on Wikipedia. I'm going to look at it from my perspective. I believe this is a Tartarian building. I think the only thing special about the Bannerman guy who slapped his name on the side of this is that he was probably rich enough to own a boat to get out there. Just think about it. We don't build shit like this no more. The reason that buildings like this fall into such disrepair is the fact that we don't know how to maintain them. We don't know how to keep them alive. They all eventually fall into ruin. Yeah, so I call bullshit on this whole thing here. All I see is some letters written on top of a old Tartarian building. Yeah, on an island in upstate New York. That shouldn't be there. Because it's not something that we would have built back then. Look at the elaborateness of this. For what? I encourage you to step away from the mainstream rhetoric or what buildings like this are supposed to be. These are clearly Tartarian, they're scattered across the world, and you just gotta see them for yourself. Mr. 76, signing out. Tartarian World with Mr. 76. I was reminiscing about home, good old New York City. And I started looking through some photos of some old structures. And here we have the Brooklyn Museum. If you look at this massive, just 
ridiculously big uh, Tartarian building right in the middle of Brooklyn. It just doesn't really make any sense. I wanted to share this with you. Look at this building. Look at those columns. Look at that pediment. The all-seeing eye. Those columns inside. The actual Grant Joyce hugeness of this freaking building. It's crazy. Now, we couldn't have built this back then. We were building shacks to live in. I'm sorry, but this is not something that we, were, we built. And I'm going to move right on to the next one here. We're going to look at the uh, Bronx Community College. This is another just set up of structures that makes no sense. It almost looks like a World's Fair, a World's Fair site. All these are different expedition halls. That's what it looks like. Now that they're saying that they build this to be a community college, and we built this whole thing for the, with these stones, and these immaculately carved constructions, it just made no sense for the time. We were still a horse and buggy people. But look at these buildings. Again, they really don't make any sense to me. But this is New York from a different perspective, looking at it, the history of it, through a different set of eyes. I can't help but look back at all of the buildings and I was walking past all of these columns and I just didn't really pay attention back then. Now we have Flushing Town Hall in Queens, just another example of a magnificent building that no one really looks at and says Tartarian, except for this Puerto Rican chilling out here in Wales. And on that note, don't forget that everything they taught you, absolutely everything was a lie. Thank you for watching. Mr. 76, signing out. This was old New York and its beautiful golden age before they rushed to tear it down. Why would they tear down these marvelous structures that were meant to stand for a thousand years? Some being torn down in just 50. It's because we inherited this city. And those who did not construct this grand architecture could not hope to maintain it. And most of it, you would find, fell to ruin. These were all empty and abandoned cities after the last reset, the mud flood. You can even see the sunken layers in many of these pictures here. Just look at that grand architecture in Penn Station. And I think they tore this down in less than 50 years. And you can find the same scene and the same sad story in nearly every city, not just unique to America. We all rush to tear down all these grand structures in all of our cities and replace them with glass boxes, literally tearing down paradise to put up a parking lot. While all these cities looking far different than they did in their golden age, when they were told to be built by horse and buggy. Question everything, friends. Until next time. People say, well, what's so strange about our history? Well, there's a lot of things. 
I mean, there's this heaping mess of wires we see in all these old photos, but there's also these things. I mean, what were these used for? It must have a purpose. Well, here's the Baltimore fire. I always said they used dynamite to put out the blaze. And digging up some train tracks, some dirt covered buildings. And then we look at modern day excavations. We see some cathedrals, energy spires. And you see the underneath New York City, all the railroads and piping. And we see the coin of San Marino showing flat earth. And we see all the lightning rods and all these old buildings. And we see some big ones like these. And even these. Our past is so strange and so interesting. Because if you look at it with the right set of eyes, you can see history in a whole new light. There are things some people seem to forget about. Thanks for watching. Oh, look at that thing. Oh, look at that spider. Yeah. So many questions. So many unanswered questions. And it makes you wonder why they say no photography. That's pretty stupid. They're definitely hiding something. That's climbable. Researchers such as John Levi, Martin Leidke, and others have repeatedly pointed out that almost all of the photographs from the 1800s seem to have the sky purposely doctored to blur it out. Notice how you can never see any clouds, distant hills or land on the horizon, the sun even, and on some of them you can even see the sloppy pixelated cuts around the buildings. Are they purposely hiding something? And if so, what and why? We have also noticed that churches and older structures around Scandinavia, and the rest of the world for that matter, all have large open belfries, but with no bells in them. They also seem to have human-sized arches and platforms, much like old skyscrapers and towers such as the Empire State Building and the Eiffel Tower. They have them very near the top. Is it possible both questions have the same simple answer? A bird's eye view of New York City, depicted in 1855. I'm sure there's a great excuse for the airship up in the top, but I am tired of excuses. The towers of the old world were built for these airships. With infrastructures of impressive mooring stations installed in many of these towers, getting on and off these airships were a breeze. But they were not just in the big city. Mooring stations were established along the countrysides as well. And far from just buildings was it possible to load and unload these airships on. Many of them took to the waters. And that's one of my favorite parts of this tech from the old world, is the versatility of it. Whether it was from the land or the sea, you could dock on ships with ease. And 
If you missed your boat docking, no worries, express flights are available right to the airship as well. Operation Gamora, a series of six raids on Hamburg between July and August 1943, was a combined Royal Air Force and United States Air Force effort. Large portions of the city were destroyed and some 45,000 people lost their lives. The night of the 27th of July was particularly destructive. The combination of the heat and low humidity fanned the flames into a firestorm that engulfed the city and sent burning human bodies whirling into the air. 900,000 people were made homeless. 22 square kilometers were destroyed creating almost 43 million cubic meters of rubble. 42,000 people were killed in four nights between the 24th of July and the 3rd of August.